Grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father in Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior. Romans 16. Now to him who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ. Now, imagine you're trying to build a house. How many contractors do we have in here that were previously contractors? One? Let's use another example. <laughs> How many of you have ever built a model or put anything together for your children? How many of you have actually used the instructions? <laughs> I tend not to use instructions on some things. Have you ever had extra parts at the end? Sometimes when you try to do things without the instructions or you try to do things without blueprints, they can end up kind of interesting. Have you ever put anything together and had to take it completely apart? Because one of the pieces you had to put on, you had to put that on before something else. <laughs> I hate to admit it. I've done that. I've done that with bookcases. Um, and it happens. And we try, you know, spiritually, we try to put things together without the blueprints. And even our society, whether it be Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, and on and on and on, We try, well, hopefully it's they try, to gain spirituality without the revelation of God. And I'm looking down here. Oh, here's a nice large one. Try, they try to do it without this. And sometimes we try to do it without the revelation of God. Or sometimes we try to do it with what we think the revelation of God is. Instead of what the actual revelation is. There's many times when we say, well, obedience of faith. Well, if I come to church... And I sit in the front row, right in front of the pastor, which nobody does anymore. <laughs> Can't imagine why. If I say the right things, surely that's, I'm, I'm walking with God. I'm being faithful. I'm being obedient because I'm doing it. But how many times do we fail in that? If we're doing it, if it's us, if it's us causing our behavior, why do we need why do we need Jesus? What's the purpose? Why even celebrate Christmas? Because if I can do it myself, if I can come to a revelation, if I can get my little crystal out, do you guys know the crystal thing with the crystals? I don't understand the whole thing, but there's also a thing with the zodiac. Spirituality, trying to gain, reach up into heaven. It's pretty high up there. I'm not sure exactly how high, but we're, we're not going to be able to do it. But nonetheless, at times we try. And we try because of our sinful flesh. I got to turn my phone on so I can see the time. 
Otherwise, we're going to be here a while. Um, we try to strengthen our faith on our own terms. <laughs> you know, I don't want to bring that up. That's long. Hopefully that's done. But a while back, was hearing it a lot, you know. You can't be a Christian. You can't be this. You can't be that. Look how Jesus is coming into the world as a baby. Coming into the world innocent. Coming into the world helpless. <laughs> what can a baby do? The king of kings. Our Lord coming into the world as a little baby, born in a manger, which is a feeding trough, a rock slab that's carved out where they put some hay that would feed the cattle. And that's our revelation. That the Son of God would be born. That through him that we would have the forgiveness of sins. Through him we would have life and salvation. Not on account of our deeds. But on account of our faith in him. Alone. But as our sinful flesh likes to construct our own spirituality, we try to design, if, if I'm only good enough, I will get into heaven. Surely that person was a good person, so surely they're in heaven. You hear that sometimes at funerals. I remember one front funeral I did a while back, and someone said, they weren't a good person. <laughs> I did a funeral last week out in Immokalee, and there was a gentleman that he passed a few weeks ago, and I remember when I first met him and he started working with us, I, he was a pain in the butt. But he knew he was a sinner. He knew. And he admitted that he was. And he admitted that he struggled. And that is what Christ has come to do, is to get inside of us. To rejuvenate us. To renew us. Not that... It's like instant, you know. In America, we love instant stuff, instant oatmeal. I, I want to call it instant popcorn because it's not. But microwave popcorn, it's a lot quicker than the old way. We like things quick. Well, guess what? We're not done. He's not done with us until Christ returns. So I got some great news for you. We're going to struggle until Christ returns. Oh, happy day. <laughs> but that is why we're here. So we will hear his words, his gospel. That the Son of God came to die for you so that you would live. That the word made flesh, the word spoken, the gospel spoken to you, that you would believe. 
in Christ through the spoken word of God. That is a revelation. When God speaks, things happen. When he, when he spoke, the world was formed, the sky was formed, the sea were, was formed. Just by him speaking it into existence. But we like to say, well, we're helping out. You guys met a friend of mine who preached at my installation, Pastor Keith. He once told me, he says, you know, if you're good here, you're going to be good here. If this is no good, this is no good. And how true is that? How true is that? This gospel promised from the beginning in Genesis 3. Promised through the prophets that the prophets foresaw the command of the eternal God. It is disclosed and revealed in the incarnate Son, born of the Virgin Mary. The Son of the Most High, truly Jesus, the Lord, who will save his people from their sins. He lives in perfect, obedient faith and goes to the cross to reveal and establish the gospel for you. By the gospel of Christ, God both establishes you and strengthens you to his own glory. By the gospel that declares to you that Jesus Christ, God established you in the faith. By the gospel proclaimed from the Spirit, by the gospel mysteriously poured out to you in the waters of baptism. By the same gospel, God strengthens you for God the obedient living. <laughs> By this same gospel, God strengthens you for God the obedient living. Do we hear in his word? By the gospel that assures you of the forgiveness of sin and the absolution. By the gospel that where you are mysteriously fed by his body and blood at the altar. In this God-given obedience of faith, we give glory to God both now and forever for what he has done. A contractor can build a multi-story home, but without having a design, can you imagine walking into the house when there's a second story on there and he has no engineering, there's no plan? Would you want to walk in? Or would you be worried about that second story coming down on top of you? God had a plan from the beginning, <laughs> and it was in his son. Don't ask me why it seems that so many get it wrong. We are saved by grace through our faith in Christ, period. When God announced the forgiveness of your sins and the absolution, done, finished. He remembers no more. So we can go out and we can forgive others because to us it doesn't matter. We don't have to hold a grudge because it doesn't matter. 
we are forgiven. The most important thing in life, we will be with Jesus. Nothing else matters to us. Let him work in you through your word. If you know others, and I'm looking at the camera right now, but I'm speaking to you here. If you know others, tell them about what Jesus has done for you. Tell him about what his gospel has done for you. Tell them about the forgiveness of sins that you have received. Because all need to hear this. In this time, during this time, and forevermore until Jesus comes back. We do not live a life of obedient faith by ourselves. We live a life of obedient faith because of what he does in us. Unless we completely reject the gospel. You always got to watch a pastor when he's not following his notes real closely. Let God reveal his mystery to you, his gospel through Jesus Christ in his word. Every once in a while, open it up. Every once in a while, come in here. Tell others who have not heard to come and hear what Christ has done. We have received a great gift of grace from God our Father. And in the gospel, he has freed us and saved us. So we have nothing else to worry about because when we die in the faith, we will be with him forever and ever. Amen.